Hey, how's it going? Master Duel Central. Today, I want to make a tier list. It's a lot later than I normally make my tier list videos. Uh, the reason for that is because I was really unsure jumping into this new format with the tier limits. If uh, tier limit was going to be so overwhelming that a lot of decks would just like be complete garbage. So I decided for this format, I'd rather kind of experience it a little bit, try different decks other than tier limit and just see like where everything is located. I do want to point out my tier lists are all about getting to diamond one, which which decks are going to be the best at getting to diamond one and which ones are going to be more of a struggle that's how i focus my tier lists because that's what most of you guys are doing let's be honest here most of the audience is out here just playing ladder just like me so that's what we're going to be doing and uh for starters here i mean we won't beat around the bush i'm not the type to try to build up excitement for this stuff i think we all know that the format is kind of revolving around tier limits now some people would say it's tier zero again i think you might be able to make that argument in tournament play with siding and best of three but i think in a best of one format it's pretty much impossible to have a tier zero deck so uh yeah tier zero not so much but definitely the best deck in the game that's undoubtedly so uh we're gonna do ad emancipators uh ad emancipators is definitely not like um like one of the best decks in the game right now but it is really good and i have been seeing them in diamond rank uh, obviously verna Sylph is some nice earth support if you want to play that route but i even think without the verna Sylph, uh just this deck is basically in the same position it was in in the last few formats where it's like yeah going first you're if you're setting up your board the way you want to set it up you're most likely winning uh if your opponent activates max c and you don't have the negate you're most likely losing and if you're going second it really depends on uh how much interruption your hand can play through some Ad Emancipator hands can play through a lot of interruption and other Ad Emancipator hands cannot. Uh, I personally am very mixed on the pile version with Ishizu cards that a lot of people are playing. I still think you should probably play like the shufflers in Ad Emancipators, uh, but I, I genuinely still think like Sprite Adams is, is the best variant of the deck, but that's a bit of a hot take. I don't really want to give you guys my hot takes. Feel free to enjoy this deck however you like. It's still a very, very strong deck. Whichever variant you're playing, it's still Ad Emancipators. I just think the excavations are like pretty damn bad on that 60 pile ishizu version and yeah the excavations are not great in the sprite variant but the sprite variant can play through so many interruptions uh whereas i, I would say like it's almost the opposite for the ishizu variant where i feel like it can play through less interruption because yes it gets bad mills but it also doesn't have a very good plan b uh, obviously grass is greener is insane if you draw it good for you you probably win the game if you get to resolve grass right but anyway so yeah i would put this card here in good i think it's good it's not really an anti-meta pick against tier but tier going second against a full Ad Emancipator board is definitely not winning. Uh, so, you know, it's just kind of in that same spot of being this deck that's really, really good going first and pretty good going second. Uh, next up here, uh, let's do an interesting one. I think um zombie control kind of went up like zombie world control you know you can kind of put this with eldritch as well but i do think you want to play some more zombie world control right now in the deck and i would put this like in mid usually i, I would put it like in kind of bad but the thing about zombies right now is that zombie world kind of shuts down tier limit um kit kalos needs aquas right so you kind of stop their main fusion from being summoned because they can't really summon it while everything is treated as zombies so that's why i think zombie world is actually like kind of good right now just because setting up that zombie world is really hard for tier players to play through with a couple of interruptions uh and they don't have that many they usually don't run that many outs to your field spells just they have they usually play like one heartbeat and the field spell and then like i guess they could get to nightmare phoenix but you know zombies are really good at getting it back on the field if you have a necro world banshee in the graveyard uh you can just get it back if the tier player mills your deck like you're kind of love that right like there's so much stuff you can do with that uh obviously they have the shufflers which does kind of hurt them which is why I can't really put zombies up here but i definitely think this is kind of a slept on deck right now i think zombies are not in a terrible spot at the moment it's just because zombie world is so good in the current format uh next up here let's do uh, i don't i don't like to do this i don't like to do this at all um dinos are kind of bad right now uh dinos are just not great i mean obviously i think dinos can still make it to diamond one i think pretty much any deck from here can actually make it to diamond one but right now in the current format it's a lot tougher if you're not uh, like up here to make it to diamond one it's a lot tougher uh dinos you know i mean they've never been the most consistent deck and the graveyard hate is really bad for dinos because a lot of people are like running d shifter a lot of people are running um what is it dd crow dd crow on misc you lose the game pretty much like there's just so many things going against dinos right now so, and just a 
the shufflers, even the shufflers just have so much control over the game. Dinos can't play going second if your opponent already has shufflers in the grave. So that's why I don't think dinos are in a very good spot right now, unfortunately. Uh, you know, we have a lot of support coming. We have so much support confirmed in the future for dinos. So it's definitely not their last hurrah. And uh, I'm sure eventually, like not even that long from now, when tier is not as prevalent, uh, we might see dinos go back up a little bit. But for now, I just don't think it's really a good call. Now, uh, if we're just going to do the like really awful decks, the good luck decks all at once here. So, you know, just the anime decks here. Boom, boom, boom. Blue Eyes, Dark Magician, and Cyber Dragon. Uh, these decks, I mean, they're <laughs> just all bad. Uh, I guess you could put Dark Magician at the top. It's probably the best of these decks. We have a very dedicated Dark Magician player in my Discord. His name is YouTube Ray. Uh, he has a YouTube channel and uh, he's really, really good at Dark Magicians. I think he even performed really well at a DK tourney, if I'm not mistaken, playing Dark Magicians uh, one or two formats ago. But uh, he was saying like in the current format, it's kind of BS. Like it's just not great for Dark Magicians. It's kind of rough. So uh, I, I feel pretty comfortable putting these all here. Uh, next up. Okay. Yeah, this one. I think this one was kind of slept on. I think this is actually, uh, Flanderis is really good right now. I wouldn't put it like up here because it still has a lot of weaknesses. Like it, it kind of hard loses to very little interruption. If they don't have their flash spell and they get impermed, they just pretty much lose the game. Uh, there's just so many ways to play through them. But the thing about them is they have a really good matchup against tier limits and having a really good matchup against tier limit puts you way up in the tier list, in my opinion, because you're going to be facing them a lot in diamond rank and even in platinum rank. I've even been hearing that there's a lot of tiers in gold rank so uh the climb should not be too hard with uh the floanderies at the moment so that's why i'm feeling floanderies definitely a really good deck i'm gonna put it up here i think that's a fair spot for it let's do the exo sisters i think exo sisters is in a very similar spot to floanderies probably just slightly under them just a really really solid deck really good anti-meta deck as well gets a lot of free wins against tier limits. uh <laughs> you can like every tier limit fusion effect triggers the on-field effects of the exo sisters so they can go into their Xyz monsters and get a bunch of banishes. Uh, like, uh, tier players just won't recover, you know? Uh, obviously, you can still beat Exo Sisters playing tier, especially if you're going first, but going second against Exo Sisters with tier, it's kind of a death sentence, honestly. If they if they have an even remotely decent hand, it's usually pretty impossible for a tier player to uh, play through a uh, Exo Sister board going second. So I think it's fair to say that Exo Sisters is in a really good place right now. So definitely, I would say uh, tier two. Oh, and I should point this out. Diamond one tier for me is like tier one one is like tier two uh mid is like tier three and uh kind of bad is like rogue but the thing is like I, I feel like rogue right now is basically tier three like because <laughs> rogue is just like too rough at the moment like i i really don't have a, a lot of faith in rogue at the moment so next up here let's do okay this is another deck that um i don't think is doing really good right now uh runic runic like pure runic runic stun stuff like that uh, i would put it in kind of bad i don't think it's very good uh like i've seen one pure runic stun player in diamond and uh i just won off of a unicorn like the deck is just not that solid honestly it's kind of goofy i mean obviously you can get some free wins because you know you activate floodgates and sometimes the floodgates just win the game but they're on two fountain now so their draw engine goes a lot less deep uh they're a lot more interruptible they're running a lot of goofy cards amano iwato's at one so they have to run inspector border which means they can't use their fusions uh there's just a lot of things going against them which i'm very happy about i absolutely hate this deck so i'm glad that it's not doing very good right now and i'm glad that it just kind of feels like a free win at the moment obviously you can still t get some free wins with it because it's a floodgate deck right uh, kind of like how umi control I, I forgot to put it on this list but umi control can also like kind of snatch some free wins at the moment wouldn't say runic stun is very good uh let's do labyrinth labyrinth as a trap deck uh, is just in a pretty good place right now. I think trap decks in general are just in a good place uh, in a tier format. Obviously, they prefer going first, but even going second, the thing is tier doesn't do much against traps in general. They don't have a lot of interruption for back row. Like let's say I'm the labyrinth player, I'm going second and I'm setting five and I'm playing against a tier player. Like the most that tier player can really do is bounce one of my back row during my turn. Like it's not, they can't negate any of them. They like they, I, of course some can do Zeus, but who sets, like you can't set up Zeus going first for one so you can't Zeus me on turn two so if it goes back to you and you get to set up Zeus that means like my deck is ass right like my traps should not be letting you get to Zeus so uh, I actually think these back row decks like Labyrinth are in a really good spot at the moment so definitely I would put Labyrinth up here and while we're talking about back row decks like that uh, I can put Eldritch like right next to Zombie I think you should probably focus on Zombie World control a little bit because Zombie World is just really just really good against tier limit if you're playing Eldritch with a little bit of Zombie World 
world in there that should still be like kind of decent i still i don't think it's very good like you're better off playing other trap decks especially exo sisters and labyrinth i think are a lot better than eldritch at the moment eldritch does have some things going for it like it can go for game a lot quicker than uh the labyrinth deck for example uh but it is not nearly as explosive it's a lot more of a grindy type of deck and uh floodgates are not as good right now i would say just in general like the type of floodgates that are good right now are good against eldritch so that's kind of an issue because like if you're playing eldritch and you're going against an anti-meta strategy that goes like the shifter or dimensional fissure uh, as an eldritch player you're really unhappy to see that you know what i mean so uh yeah i definitely wouldn't say it's like amazing and kind of same for zombies it's just that going first they both have a lot of things going for them oh this is an interesting one let's do heroes I actually think, like, I'm not going to put them in good yet, but I think they're, like, they're out of rogue for me now. Right now, heroes are in a pretty good spot. Uh, basically, if your opponent is playing tier and they don't have super polymerization, Dark Law just hard wins the game, right? So just the fact that this deck has such easy access to Dark Law and can set up Dark Law with a bunch of other interruptions, I think makes it really, really solid. You can go, like, Plasma, Dark Law, Pass, and, like, what is a tier player going to do against that if they didn't specifically draw super poly, which not even every tier player runs so yeah i would definitely say like hero feels really good right now i think it's quite good um, maybe not like okay really good might be a bit of an exaggeration but it's at least like uh, tier three you know it's like top of tier three i would say it's a, that dark law it, it, it's putting in that work you know next up let's do sprites uh specifically sprite melfi i think is right here right next to Merly. Uh, i think sprite melfi is absolutely tier one in the current format and this is kind of why i was saying like this is definitely not a tier zero format i just recently made a deck profile on a uh, sprite melfi and this deck is just crazy i went like on a five game win streak in diamond four got to diamond three while i was just recording a video i wasn't even like playing my best because i was like talking at the same time this deck is insane uh setting up a herald on your opponent's turn and being able to go into avramax as well makes it so your opponent really can't play because tier limits if they have to deal with a herald uh they pretty much have to beat over it because they can't play under herald of the arc light but if you have herald of the arc light and then you make avramax using your IP Mascarena, they can't beat over the Herald and they just can't play. Well, unless they run Goddess and they can get to four summons, but under Herald getting to four summons in tier is pretty unlikely. Really rare that they can do that. So yeah, this deck is absolutely amazing. Also, it can play through a lot of interruptions. Uh, tier Lament doesn't set up that many interruption going first, unless they get all their back row, then they might be able to like make it really hard for the Sprite player to play. But otherwise, if they can't set up their back row, like they really don't do enough to stop Sprite from playing. So you just have so many many plays uh, right now i run gamma burst because you can go for game pretty quickly in the grind game it gets pretty tough for sprite to keep up with the tier limits because tier limits have like just an absolutely broken grind game because they keep just shuffling their resources and just doing their plays over and over again but uh if you just go for sprite and uh, going second you just like play through a bunch of interruption and make sure to go for game as soon as possible with the cat shark or with the gamma burst usually it'll be a pretty easy game for sprite so i actually think sprite is in an amazing spot right now uh uh, next up here, let's do Dinomorphia. I think Dinomorphia is kind of underrated. Uh, last tier list, I put it pretty low, but just like these decks here, uh, I think back row decks are just in a pretty good place right now. I would definitely not say it's like up here with Labyrinth and Exo Sisters because it's not exactly anti-meta or anything. And actually anti-meta strategies can kind of hurt Dinomorphia, but I would definitely put it like uh, up here, you know, in mid, uh, just because it's kind of a similar situation where, you know, if you set up your back row, even if you're setting five passing when you go second, it's still really hard for the tier limit play to actually like deal with five back row. So yeah, Dinomorphia actually quite good at the moment, in my opinion. Uh, next up, let's do Sky Striker. Uh, I think Sky Striker is kind of bad right now. Maybe this is a, a weird take. You know, I've been talking about these back row decks and this is a spell deck and it's pretty much the same concept. Sky Strikers are just not that explosive. You know, they're just kind of the deck that goes into a long grind game normally and tier limits love grind games. So that's why I don't think it's very good right now. It's like, if you're going to get into a long grind game with tier limit, uh, you're not going to be feeling too good about it. Also, the shuffler is like just murder murder sky strikers because they don't get to use the good effect like they don't, don't get the additional effect from the three spells unless they have like just insane graveyard setup definitely better than dinos but still uh, kind of bad but rockets i think rockets are just kind of mid I, I honestly like i don't think they're that good right now i know you can play them with the shizu card set up some shufflers like they're always going to be a deck that you can get to diamond one with no doubt about it uh yeah they can play through interruption but they can't really play through as much interruption as adams and they also don't have as good of a grind game in my opinion as adam and Pater's. they still have a grind game they're definitely not like instantly dead if you're out there bored but it's still like quite hand dependent so i don't know i, I just don't think they're in that good of a spot i would say they're just kind of 
pretty good. Okay, and here let's do the best of the kind of bad. Salomon Great. I think Salomon Great is kind of bad. It's not very good. Like it, it play, it summons so much for so little. It loses to Maxi so hard because it has to do so many special summons to set up like so few interruptions. So Maxi is just an absolute death sentence against uh, Salomon Great. It's not very good, but it is also not like it's not the worst. It's very consistent. You can kind of mix it with math mech stuff. Like there's a lot of good things you can do with Salomon Great, but I just don't think like it's up here. You know, like it, it doesn't particularly do well in this format, in my opinion. Math mech. Math mech is interesting. I would probably put Math mech in mid. Uh, math mech is still like really strong and kind of similar to Hero and Rocket. You absolutely can get to Diamond One with Math mech. The thing about Math mech though is like they really hard lose to Shufflers. Hard Shufflers are so good against Math Mech that it's kind of unbelievable. It can play through a lot of interruptions, way more than a lot of other decks, even up here. Like, it can play through a lot more interruption than Floanderies, I would say. But it also, like, just kind of gets destroyed by the meta. Shufflers are such a decisive L for Math Mech that I don't really feel comfortable putting it higher. But if you're playing Math Mech, I don't think you'll have that much trouble getting to Diamond 1, if I'm being completely honest. It's just such a solid deck. Let's talk about another deck that I made a video on recently, actually. Uh, Crystal Beast. I think Crystal Beast is good. I, I wouldn't, I, I don't know if I want to put it above Labyrinth. Yeah, I don't even think that's coping, honestly. Um, Crystal Beast is like just a good anti-meta deck. Like it's really, really good against tier. It eats up the tier matchup. When you don't see a lot of tiers, you're actually, you're the one in tiers. This, this deck is really just made to beat this one. Obviously, you don't really care about your graveyard very much. So you can play a bunch of graveyard hit. You can play Dimensional Shifter. You could play Defissure if you wanted to, but you don't really need to. This deck is more consistent at searching Necro Valley than Grave Keepers. Like it's insane how easily you can get to Necro Valley in Crystal Beasts. And really Necro Valley alone is basically game against tier limit. Since you're seeing tier limits about 70% of the time, it's a really good format to be playing Crystal Beast. Definitely the best Crystal Beast has ever been and probably will be in Master Duel for a while. So if you have the Crystal Beasts, I recommend maybe checking out my video featuring Neshi and maybe building Conclave Control. And honestly, you're gonna have a good time. It absolutely can perform in Diamond. I got a rank up with it. Uh, I was doing misplays and still getting like a decent win rate. Uh, if you're like not doing a bunch of misplays like me with the deck, it's it's really stellar. It's really amazing. Just a great anti-meta call. And uh, I know a lot of people might look at this and go like, no, this is goofy. This guy's coping. But uh, I don't know, guys. Try it out. Yeah, this, this one might be a little controversial because I know the shufflers are really good against this deck. But I, I still kind of think Despia is like up here. Like it, I'm like mixed on it. Part of me wants to just put it in good. Part of me wants to put it up here. The thing about Despia is for one, a lot of people are running tier Despia, which I do think is a less good version of tiers, but not like so much worse that it's just a bad deck or anything. There's a lot of good things going for it. It has a lot of gas actually when you're playing the tier stuff with the Despia stuff. It can get really hard to like properly interrupt the combos. Ash is a lot less popular right now. So Branded Fusion is a lot more often going to go through when you're playing first. So I don't know. I think Despia is actually in a pretty damn good spot right now. It can play with the Shizu cards, it can play with the tier cards. So really you can play all of the meta inside of Despia. So that's why I feel pretty comfortable putting Despia up here. You might say it, it's kind of cheating because I'm really talking about tier Despia. But uh, even like, I don't know, even like regular Despia, it's still like a really solid deck. So I don't really feel uncomfortable putting it up here. Again, if you guys think that's Copium, that's fine. I felt more relieved when I was playing Sprite against tier than when I was playing Sprite against Despia. When I was seeing Despia cards, I was like, oh shit, they don't care about my dimensional shifter. They don't care about all my graveyard hate. And I think that's actually a thing going for them is that all these anti-meta decks going around don't hurt Despia nearly as much. So even if you're playing tier Despia, you can at least rely on your like branded Despia engine uh, if you're like playing under D shifter or stuff like that. And you can still set up like really good stuff under that. So I don't know, maybe a hot take, maybe it isn't. But uh, yeah, that's what I think for Bandit Despia. Uh, and might as well just put the last deck that I think is at the very top here. Um, Rika Sun Avalon just shits on tier. It's actually disgusting. So yeah, you can Rika Con Con uh, to tribute. Like uh, let's say, let's say you, you go Rika Con Con to tribute Kid Kalos. Well, it's a cost, right? It's not an effect to tribute 
Kit Kalos that way. So it's not going to trigger the graveyard effect to mill five. So just by being able to tribute tier limit monsters and not give them their graveyard proc effect, that is absolutely busted. Also, the amount of interruption these decks set up is disgusting. They can set up a Cactus Bouncer, which is basically playing stun in a combo deck. So it's absolutely disgusting what this deck can do. I think this is like the new Drytron, if you will. This is the best combo deck in the game. When it comes to like making insane unbreakable boards going first, this is the deck to do it. Going second, uh, I don't think it's nearly as broken. It's still really good and has a lot of gas. Like it goes full combo off of a single normal monster. And it's kind of hard to interrupt because it's very hand dependent. But uh, going first, this deck is like unmatched. I think this is the best deck in the game. Going first, it, when you do full combo, like I don't think there's a deck really that beats this one. Next up here, let's do Numerons. So Numerons are a bit better than I thought they would be. Uh, it's like weird because this is literally just a draw the out type of deck. But um, I don't know. I've been seeing them a lot in Diamond. That's really all I'm going off of. When I was playing in Diamond, I saw actually quite a few Numeron players. And I'm guessing it has to do with the fact that Tier Limit doesn't set up such difficult boards to break. Like their boards are usually pretty easy to break. And they usually get a lot out of the grind game. So I'm guessing Numeron kind of just capitalizes on the fact that they can just close out the game really quickly before there ever is a grind game. Uh, so yeah, I, I actually think Numeron is in a quite good spot. I'm willing to put it like in mid here. Here, like right under Dynamorphia and above like the zombie stuff like it's still not amazing or anything like but I, I think it's pretty good I definitely able to get to diamond one considering how many I've seen I'm currently in diamond three by the way all right so only two decks left to do on this list here uh let's do punks uh, punk engine, you know, there's a lot of different ways to play punk. I can't really cover them all. Like there's the Shizu punk list. There's just like uh, regular punk, just do synchro summoning, bounce a bunch of stuff, psychic and punisher to close out games. It's just a solid deck. It's not like crazy or anything. I'm probably like going to put it in mid. I think like right above Dinomorphia is kind of fair, like under rocket. I don't think it's exactly as good as rocket, but it's got really crazy combos and just so many different variants that you can play with. So I definitely feel like punk is just like pretty good you know i think right in the middle of mid is like a really good spot for it and next up let's do the final deck for this list sword soul uh sword soul is a little weird sword soul is very fair you know sword soul is extremely fair uh i definitely don't want to i don't think i can put sword soul up here it doesn't like the anti-meta decks the anti-meta decks are very rude to sword soul um but it also like it most definitely can win going second in the tier matchup so I don't think like it's bad like it's definitely not in kind of bad maybe it's like a high mid deck i would say like uh probably like around where math mech is like maybe above math mech just because the shufflers have less of an impact on sword soul but it's just kind of fair and kind of easy to play through unless you're playing against a very skilled sword soul player because there are some people that are really really good at sword soul and really calculated with their place but yeah if you guys ever watched pack tcg play sword soul you kind of get where, what i'm saying where like this deck is really straightforward and it looks kind of here, but there's actually so many branching paths that you can take and a lot of really smart plays that you can do when you get really accustomed to the deck so like if pack is playing this deck then it's like an easy die like it's up here you know what i mean <laughs> but uh if i'm playing this deck then it's down here so <laughs> i'm gonna put it here uh, actually if i'm playing this deck it's probably here so i'm gonna put it here to be fair uh but yeah i still think like if if you're a big fan of sword soul i don't think it's a bad pick or anything it's just not the greatest you know i think this is a fair enough sum up of the format uh let me know if you guys think i'm capping on some of these uh despia i think is probably my most questionable pick but i'm pretty confident about this just because i've seen so much despia in diamond and that might be just because the deck is really really popular and people like invested so much in despia because it's a very expensive deck i just think the deck is really solid in the current format that's just me let me know what you guys think in the comments anyway guys that's gonna be it for the video make sure to check the link in the description if you want to get the misplay central hat very fun or very cool also huge shout out to my uct tier members that would be raptor rapture bonger man for 20 dad dude joey b-dubs Hit or miss JT, JQ the King. You guys are awesome. Thanks also to people in the baby tier, in the miss tier, over on Twitch. And you, who's liking, commenting, subscribing, buying the hat, doing all that good stuff. All right, peace.